Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Christina. And in today's video, I'm sort of doing a cross between like a day in the life and a do a lesson with us, I guess. We are heading out of the house today, um, kind of on the early side before it gets super hot. It's been like pretty hot and humid here in upstate New York. And so we really love doing lessons outside, both at home and at the park. So today is one of those days we're gonna go to the park. And our favorite park has a little pond that we love to um even just walk around and scooter around and all of those things and i got the brand new little hearts and hands course from the good and the beautiful called nests and burrows and there is a cute little lesson about ponds so i just thought it would be perfect to go to the pond and get a chance to scooter around and get some energy out and also get our lessons out of the way so come along with us if you want to see how we do lessons at the park and also to get a peek at the new science for little hearts and hands nests and burrows course. When we first get to the park, I really like to let them get some energy out and scooter to where we're going to relax and set up to do our lessons. This just helps them burn some energy and also feel like they're not waiting to get a chance to play. And even if they need breaks in between during the lesson in order to do that, um, I'll do that within balance as well. So we found this picnic table where there's a little bit of shade, even though it's pretty overcast. So I'm not too worried about it today. Um, and there's also a tree that they can climb if they need to get some wiggles out. There's a bench if we want to move at all. And so we're going to get started right here after I give them a chance to settle into this little spot and observe in the pond and just kind of gently get started. This also gives me a chance to get settled, take some deep breaths, and everybody's nervous systems really to reset from the sights and sounds of being out in nature, which is one of the many reasons why I love to do lessons outside and just get us outside as much as possible. So I'm gonna jump right into the lesson with these guys, and then once we are done, I will give you a flip through of this new course. Pond Habitat. Frogs are animals that have long, sticky tongues and live in bodies of water called ponds. A pond is a lot like a lake, mostly surrounded by land and filled with fresh water. But ponds are smaller than lakes and usually aren't very deep. This allows sunlight to reach the bottom so beautiful and interesting plants can grow there. There's a lot more to learn about ponds in today's story about Freddy and his frog, Mr. Hopper. So we're going to read a story from the Big Book of Science Stories about Freddy and his friend, Mr. Hopper. Freddy's Frog. Oh, his name is Freddy. Freddy was trying hard to focus and work on his science lessons about ponds as he watched the beautiful morning dawning outside the window. He drew some pond animals and the parts of a pond on his diagram as his mother talked about them. Looking up from his work, he asked his mother, how are ponds made? That's a great question, Freddie, she answered. Ponds usually come from water and rivers. When a river floods or gets blocked by something, the water goes over the sides onto other areas. These places sometimes become ponds. Ponds are also made by people for all kinds of different reasons. Some are made for things such as giving water to animals or breeding fish, while others are created for fun to look at and enjoy. But instead of people, the pond community or habitat is made up of plants and animals that got perfectly made to live there. For example, every plant, bug, turtle, and frog is an important part of its environment. Speaking of frogs, Freddie said, what time are we going to take Mr. Hopper back to the pond? Well, said mom laughing, I guess we could go now and finish this lesson sitting by the pond. Freddie jumped up and ran off to put Mr. Hopper in his box. Quietly, Freddie and his mom had gone over to check on the frog. His leg was hurt, so he couldn't jump. He won't be able to survive out there here with his leg like that. So they had brought him home and kept him in an old fish tank while his leg healed. Freddy carried the box carefully, smiling at his frog friend, looking up at him through the clear lid. They had become fast friends and Freddy had loved taking care of him. He was a little sad to say goodbye, but he was happy that Mr. Hopper was all better. <coughs> Once they reached the pond, Freddy and his mom sat down by the water, ready to learn more about the pond habitat. Freddy, do you remember what non-living or abiotic things affect the way a pond habitat works? asked his mom. Water, sunlight, heat, air, and minerals, he recited, such as rocks and soil in the bottom of the pond, he finished, picking up a nearby rock. Yeah. 
Very good, she continued. Water is very important because it gives some animals a place to live and others water to drink and bathe in. So mid-lesson, they noticed some fish swimming around and they got really interested. And so we paused right in the middle of our lesson and um, allowed some time for them to observe because how silly would it be for me to say, no, you can't observe this actual pond and the habitat and the creatures living in it that we're reading about. You have to sit here and listen. So we took our time and it was a great opportunity to not only take a break and kind of like reset our focus, but get them to like truly engage through all of their senses what they were learning about. So the idea of being able to learn about a place while you're immersed in it is just such a powerful um, and genuine learning experience. We don't always get to do this, right? We can't be in every country that we learn about and all of those things, which is why anytime there is an opportunity to do that, I love to be able to do that with them. And just seeing the eyes of their understanding being opened as they're immersed um, is just so cool. And a great way that I like to transition back is to bring along one of their favorite snacks. We love these Scout cookies because they are such a healthy alternative to a typical cookie or treat. Organic, way less sugar, few ingredients. What about here, he asked, putting his hand in the water by the bank's edge. The pond's edge, called the littoral zone, is the warmest of all. It's home to sunbathing turtles, hidden snakes, waddling ducks, lots of insects, and frogs. As you can see, my older two really wanted to be able to stay up in the tree while they listened to the rest of the story. So I just checked in with them to make sure that they were able to still follow along and hear me. And Freddie stay couldn't wait to start his pond so building project. Maybe ready, Mr. Hopper will come over, and visit my pond, he thought, with have a their smile. snack and finish up the lesson. I used to think that moving around meant that they weren't paying attention, but I have actually found that moving around helps them pay attention sometimes. Fun facts about pond habitats. Baby frogs called tadpoles will grow faster if they sense that the pond is in danger of drying out. Ponds have been the inspiration for many works of art, poetry, and literature throughout the years. During the last 30 years of his life, famous artist Claude Monet created about 250 oil paintings showing the lily pond in his garden. And don't you any, um, lily islands that all come on my land, or do they just stay in the water? Don't That's a good question. Have you ever seen one on land before? Never. I don't know if I have either. I'm trying to think. Always near like the water's edge, but still technically in the water, right? Yeah. That's a really good question though. Maybe we could research it later. All right, so now that we read the story and some pond facts, let's talk about some of it. What are two signs that a pond is healthy? Um, a lot of, er, lot of animals and plants. Yeah, lots of animals and plants. What else, Seth? What were you gonna say? Flesh and clean. And clean water. Yeah, clean water, good. This is not a healthy thing. Juliana, did you wanna add anything? Yeah, so some parts of it are warm and some parts of it are cold. And some parts are really hot. Yeah. And some parts are like kind of warm. That was cool. Is the water in a pond warmer at the bottom or at the surface? At the, at the surface. surface. If you built your own pond, what would you want to live in it? Um, I want a turtle to live in it. You'd want a turtle to live in it? I would want window and then fish. And other creatures. Hundreds of thousands of herons, that's a lot. And fish and other kinds of creatures. What about you, G? Probably about 50 turtles. Um, 30, um, one of those fish that have the whiskers. So we successfully finished our pond lesson. And so while these guys play, and run around. I'm going to give you a bit of a flip through to just see um, what this new course looks like beyond just the pond lesson. So there's some audio narration pawns in the back because every other lesson you'll have a story like we read today, but then every other lesson you'll have an audio narration on the Good and the Beautiful app that they can listen to. And there's a little pond, pond where they can follow along with the story on the little numbered spots on the page. They have something to do with their hands as well. If you're familiar with the Science for Little Hearts and Hands and you've done some of the other courses, it is designed with the same structure. I love the big book of science stories. They're beautiful, engaging stories that deepen 
their understanding and connect with the topic through story form, which is just so powerful. The illustrations are beautiful. I love the fun facts that are included and all of the relatable topics too in the Nests and Burrows course. So I'm so excited to go through this one with all three of my younger kids who are five, six, and nine. And technically this is for preschool through second grade, but my nine-year-old who's going to be 10 learned so much from it and really enjoys it. So we include her in on it as well. They've actually made a friend um, and they're all exploring the pond together. So I'm just relaxing. And again, this is why I love to get outside and do lessons because I can relax and enjoy being in nature and they can relax and enjoy being in nature and be kids and get their energy out and make friends. And it's just really a lovely way to learn. When they're ready to move on to a different part of the park, they can just grab their scooters and we are coming upon a bunch of geese, so they're just observing them. And that's what's really cool, too, about being out in nature, is that they get to see different creatures out in their environment and engage with them. We also saw a couple of ducks as we moved even further down the pond, and just watching them swim and talking about what kinds of ducks they are and if they're male or female, and really engaging with what we're learning about, what we've learned in the past, what we may want to learn about in the future. So I hope you've enjoyed spending a little bit of a day with us, getting to do a lesson with us, and getting a peek at the brand new Science for Little Hearts and Hands course from The Good and the Beautiful. You can find it linked down in the description box below. And I hope to see you in one of my next videos. And until next time, stay rooted.